I haven't really been a fan of the iPhone XS series, but after using the XS Max for a very short period of time, it's actually worth considering. It has good specs, cameras on point, slick design that doesn't really scream old iPhone, kind of, and a decent size for big phone lovers like myself. So why are we talking about a 2018 flagship iPhone? To be honest, just two reasons. The first is the current price of the device, the second is iOS updates. So at launch, this phone cost about a thousand dollars, but today you could find this on the used market for about I think 350 or more, slightly above 350. And with the new iOS 16 launch, this is possibly the oldest iPhone that supports all the features, meaning any iPhone below the iPhone XS Max is missing a feature or a few features from the new update. I strongly recommend this phone to someone who hasn't used an iPhone before or uses an older iPhone and doesn't want to spend a couple more dollars to get something pretty decent. And in the past, I honestly would have recommended getting the regular iPhone, which is still, which I still feel is a very decent device to start with. But now, especially with a kind of price drop due to the new iPhone releases, iPhone XS Max is the new way forward. So let's talk about it. So when it comes to overall build quality of this device, it's actually pretty good and has the same premium feel of how iPhones, I think iPhones at this point are known for their premium feel. And yeah, this doesn't really say less about that. The front and back are made from Gorilla Glass 5. It's rated IP68, but you know, as these phones get older, you should really avoid dipping them in water for any sort of experiment. If it happens to fall in water on accident and survives, then yeah. The sides are made from stainless steel and tend to get scratched easily, but not to be actually worried about because that's the case for every other iPhone out there. All buttons and ports are up to date with their placement with no headphone jack and yeah, at this point we know it's actually never coming back. The backs actually have a glossy finish that attracts fingerprints easily. Yeah, especially the space grey version so you should consider getting a case if you're getting any of these. So to me, the build quality is as solid as the newer iPhones except maybe you're not getting ceramic shield but then what most people who call this old might not consider is that as of 2018 this was the best iphone money could buy and fun fact as a fan of big phones myself this was actually the first iphone to come in this exact size that means every other iphone was actually smaller this comes with a 6.5 inch display for outdoor use it goes up to 625 nits which might not seem like much compared to newer iPhones with 1200 and now even 2000 nits on like the iPhone 14 but it's still quite visible during the day. This is an OLED display and looks good having deeper blacks and more vibrant colors for watching videos, gaming and just viewing high dynamic range pictures. The refresh rate on this is just 60 hertz which to be honest you shouldn't be surprised because Apple did start making higher 120 hertz displays to like the iPhone 13 Pro series and like I've said multiple times the iPhone so far have the best looking 60 hz displays and yeah the 10s max is no exception all right for my favorite parts performance in the iPhone 10s max we have the a12 bionic chip with 4 gigs of ram the same chip that is in the iPhone 11 series which to me is one of the reasons I'll suggest you picking the iPhone XS Max. When it comes to gaming, this handles everything you throw at it, but with a slight catch, which is heat. But really, I don't think there's any device at this point that doesn't get like hot when you're playing graphically intensive games. So yeah, but if you don't play heavy games on your device, then this would be a very smooth device and probably last longer. Speaking of lasting longer, this comes with a massive 3174 mAh battery, which is the largest I think I've seen on an iPhone. I don't think I've seen anything higher than this. Even now, I think the battery on this is a bit bigger than the I think it's bigger than the iPhone 12 Pro series. So yeah, I think that's actually a win for this device. Unfortunately, this doesn't come with MagSafe or 5G. So I guess, yeah, that's a loss now. I don't know. Depending on what kind of user you are, you should be able to go a whole day on this device with a single charge. But if you game on like a regular and do much heavy tax on your phone, find yourself charging this multiple times a day. Looking at the back of the device, we have the two camera setup with the 12 megapixel wide angle lens and the telephoto. And to be honest, photos on this are pretty decent with sharp details and high dynamic range than previous iPhones. This comes with portrait mode, but having an older chip means it might not be as perfect as newer iPhones, especially once it comes to like getting the edges of subjects. But regardless, this is a solid camera. And unfortunately, we do not get night mode. So taking pictures in like low light situations will result to like more grains in your photos. So generally, the 12 megapixel cameras actually take decent pictures, but 
the, the only catch is though you don't get night mode is like basically struggles in like low light situations and stuff all right so is the iphone XS max worth getting in 2022 and at this point i think also 2023 well i would say yes because of the value and high performance you'll be getting at a relatively low price but then i want to know what your own thoughts are and if you have this device already i believe you'll be able to do a lot of people a big favor by just leaving your experiences in the comments section down below yeah that's basically it for this video if you liked it if you got some kind of value from it consider subscribing and click the video on your screen right now to see what i think about the iphone 10s versus the iphone 10r very interesting topic i'll see you in that video bye